Option E, astrophysics, is uh, an option that's both for standard level and higher level students. So it's okay for either or. Um, I'm going to start off by uh, going over some basic definitions. Um, and I got to tell you, this is actually my favorite option. Uh, actually, it's my favorite topic within physics. So keep in mind, I'm very biased. I think this is the coolest thing because everyone can appreciate just looking up at the sky and, and wondering what's going on up there. Um, so as far as part of the basic definitions, one of the first things you're supposed to know is um, about how the Earth actually rotates and uh, so that way the stars appear to move. Um, but it's not actually the stars that move. Okay, that's the first thing uh, you're supposed to know about. Okay, so if you look up in the night sky, for example, uh, you might see a whole bunch of stars in a certain spot. And you go back uh, a few hours later and the stars will appear to have moved. And that's because the whole sky seems to rotate. Now that's not the sky itself that's rotating. That's the stars are staying still. It's only us, you know, that's... So imagine there's a star over there. It's just us that's actually rotating. So it appears to move. Uh, so that's the first thing you're supposed to know about. Another thing you're supposed to know about is uh, all the planets in order. Now, um, it used to be to where you had to learn about Pluto, but Pluto has uh, recently been downgraded. It's no longer a planet. It's uh, sometimes known as a dwarf planet now. So um, the reason they did this, it's not that it doesn't exist anymore or anything. Um, and in fact, there's a satellite that's on its way there to go visit it. So uh, in a couple of years, it's going to go and hopefully take some nice pictures of Pluto. But uh, as far as the planets go, you're supposed to know them in order. So the very closest one to the sun is Mercury. Then it goes Venus, then Earth, then Mars, then Jupiter, then Saturn, and then Uranus. <laughs> funny name, and then Neptune. Uh, it used to be Pluto, but uh, no longer. So it's sort of like that. So that's uh, the different planets, but uh, those are fairly basic things. I'm not even going to write them down. Those are easy things to look up. There used to be a mnemonic uh, to remember the planets in order. It used to be, my very educated mother just served us nine pizzas, but now you can't have the P for pizzas. So maybe my very educated mother just served us nothing? I don't know. Uh, but as far as basic definitions, um, one of the first ones I'd like to show you is actually, well, just uh, talk a little bit about the sun and what it does. So the sun, uh, well, actually not even the sun, all stars. So stars give off uh, light. Duh, most people know this. But that's actually because there is a giant fusion reactor going on inside the sun. Okay, so there's actually fusion happening, which is converting hydrogen to helium. And as we saw in, um, in uh, the nuclear physics topic uh, from the core, there we learned that every time uh, new elements are made, for example, every time uh, helium is made, you also get some energy. And that energy then is uh, going to be in the form of heat and light. And so that's what stars do. They're big, giant fusion reactors. But now, the uh, light that they go give off, we actually say it's luminosity. So L is going to be the letter that we use for this. And it's luminosity. And that's basically just the power that the light gives off. So power is measured in watts or joules Per second. Do you remember that equation I keep uh, pumping out here? I keep uh, really pushing it. It's power is work over time or power is energy over time. Hopefully you can see that here that power because it's energy over time that's why it's in joules per second. Okay so just don't forget the power is energy over time. So the word that we use in uh, uh, astrophysics is luminosity. That's an intrinsic property of the star. In other words, the star is, is putting out this light always. Maybe not always, but what, during its life, while it's going through a main sequence, for example. Um, this is what we're going to be mainly talking about here. So that's luminosity. But um, the fact that stars are far away that means that it doesn't actually appear so bright. So we're going to have another quantity that we call B, which is the apparent 
brightness. So that's going to be the apparent brightness of a star, and that's going to be measured in, I'm just going to get rid of these, um, this power's energy over time, because it's not really needed. It just explains what's going on with luminosity. So apparent brightness is going to be um, how the luminosity of the star actually gets received here on Earth. So that's going to be in watts per meter squared. In other words, it's going to be the power per unit area. So what I want you to understand is this. Uh, we have this notion called a standard candle. Uh, I was just putting down the chalk there. Um, so what happens is, can you imagine uh, two candles? So I've got a candle here and a candle here, and they're the same luminosity. In other words, they put out the same amount of light. Now those two candles, if I take one and I put it a lot farther away, you should know right away what this one looks like. This one's going to look dimmer. Right? If, I, if I put it, let's say, uh, 100 meters away, that, this one right here is going to appear a lot dimmer, even though it's actually the same brightness as this one. So there is an effect of luminosity. Luminosity, remember, that's the intrinsic, that's how bright the candles actually are. But as I have more distance, it's going to appear dimmer. And that's exactly what's going on here. Luminosity is what the star is actually sort of pumping out. And apparent brightness is what we measure here on Earth. And there's a relation then that tells us about, uh, that actually compares these two. So basically talks about the um, apparent brightness and how that's an effect of distance. We call these standard candles because, uh, or at least in, in astrophysics, we're often looking for things that are standard candles. The reason is that we want to know something, that way we can actually go and uh, measure its distance. Because the problem is we can't actually measure it by physically going there. What we have to do is infer its distance. And the problem is these stars, they don't all shine with the same brightness. Some stars are actually brighter than others. And so the really bright ones might be uh, really far away, but appear really bright. Um, whereas you might have a really, really dim, crappy star really, really close. And those two might actually look the same from here when they're actually very, very different. So what we're often trying to do in astrophysics is find quantities or things that give us what we call a standard candle. So in other words, some property, some intrinsic thing about a star where then we know how bright it really is. Because then if we can detect it farther away, then of course, then we know, uh, well, if we can detect its light, but it's dimmer, then we know that how far it is based on how dim it is compared to how bright it should be. So all that to say that there's a nice equation uh, that we can use and it goes like this. Uh, this is in your uh, data booklet. So B equals L over four pi D squared. This is the first of what I think are the important uh, equations. So this is the first one here, and this tells us something about the distance between these, uh, between the star and us. So we've already defined B as the apparent brightness. We've already defined L as the luminosity. And what this is, this is four pi D squared, where D is the distance to the star. This is going to be measured in meters, so this is going to be huge, right? Because stars are actually really far away. So we're going to have this effect here. Now this 4 pi d squared, it actually comes uh, from the surface area of a sphere. And that's just because the, the star's light you know, goes out in some three-dimensional sphere. And of course, then we have to take a look at uh, something to do with the surface area of that sphere. So that's why we actually care about this right here. This is the effect. Um, this is how much the light dims from a star that's actually pumping out this much luminosity. Uh, with distance, it basically makes the luminosity less. Well, it doesn't make the luminosity less, but it makes it appear less. That's why we have this. So that's the first of the uh, important equations. Another thing is actually to mention um, distances. A lot of times we actually measure distances to stars. We've got actually three different units for distances. So we may use meters. But that's actually not very uh, effective because stars are so insanely far away that we just have like 10 to the power of lots meters. So we have something a little bit better. We have a light year. So L-Y, light year. 
And we also have things called parsecs. So one light year is the distance that light travels in one year. Now I used to show my students uh, a scene from Star Wars because uh, it actually turns out that it's, uh, I think in the very, very first one that was made, um, so Star Wars Episode One, I guess you'd call it now. Um, in that one, there's a scene where I think uh, they're looking for a, a ride on the Millennium Falcon, if you know Star Wars. And at some point, uh, I think it is that um, Obi-Wan Kenobi is asking um, Han Solo, uh, you know, if the Millennium Falcon is fast enough. And he says, are you kidding? This thing is the, you know, this is the ship that did the Kessel Run and under blah, 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 parsecs. And that implied a unit of time, but in fact, it's actually a unit of distance. So we've got light years and we've got parsecs. Those are both going to be units of distance. We're going to talk a little bit more about those, but the key thing about light year is this. A light year is the distance that light travels in one year. Now, light is super fast. Light goes 300,000 kilometers every one second. So imagine your light traveling that fast and you're traveling for one year. That's why uh, light years are an effective unit. Isn't that cool? That means when you look up into the sky, you're looking back in time because the light from those stars actually has taken many, many, many years to get there. You're looking back in time. 